jump, jump in and respect your time and the fact that it's cold and we all want to drink soup and huddle in front of the fire right now. Uh, if we wanted to, if we wanted to start off by asking you if you are um, from Basalt Middle School, either a student or a parent, can you raise your hand? Great. Thank you. If you are from the Waldorf School, can you raise your hand? <laughs> Great to have you. Do we have any students from the community school up in Woody Creek or down in Carbondale? Okay, that's great. Do we have any parents, um, um, Spanish speaking parents, who would like uh, the support of us translating in Spanish? I would say, Father, I'm going to say this in Espanol. Excellent. Gracias. Okay, good. that's helpful. Thank you. Um, so I'll start off. My name is Peter Mueller. I'm the principal of the Salt High School, and I'll ask Jamie to do it. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll, yeah. Figure, we'll figure it out. Um, this is my second year at the Salt High School, and I um, was in the Roaring Fork Valley years ago, where I taught English and ran the outdoor program at the Colorado Rocky Mountain School in Carbondale. My wife and I were there from 1991 to 2000. And uh, we uh, fell in love with the Roaring Fork Valley at that time, and we're happy to be um, back in the valley. Uh, my interest in coming here is both geographic as well as um, just educational. I love the fact that I work in a diverse school. I feel like this school represents the real world, and the way students treat each other is inspiring to me. It's also inspiring um, how hard our teachers work to make education real and significant for each and every student in school. Uh, it feels like a great privilege to be here in this community, a community that cares deeply about education and cares deeply about um, having a real academic experience that's enriched with athletics, the arts, clubs, outdoor education, and helping students uh, really excel in a multicultural environment. It's a really exciting place to work, and I love the ability to work with students of all kinds, of all backgrounds. It's great to be here. Thank you. Jamie, I'm sorry. A British version. Yes, we have a lot of machines to translate, but this is not here. This is a problem, but it's a problem. So we don't want to translate all the tenemos información en inglés también en español y los cursos más importantes yo puedo aprovechar así en español pero es el director y es el director fue el director de educación de de libre de experiencia experiencia experiencias en Colorado Rocky Mountain School y eso es el oportunidad de este trabajo de volver a esta valle Yo soy el subdirector, my name is Jamie Ozak, and I'm the assistant principal. Um, I was formerly a math uh, max teacher in Aspen, it was my third year uh, in the high <coughs> school. I have been a master of mathematics in Aspen, uh, it's an SB Tercer Radio, and I saw the TV voice. I've been in the Academy Escuela Habilidad y la Placea de Continuar su Educación después de high school. Um, it's, it's an puerta uh, a few different thing, you know. There's one thing I'm really passionate about is being prepared to and wanting to continue your education after high school and you know, to continue to learn throughout your life. It's basically it's a portal, it's, it's a door to a great life, to a better life. And that's the thing that I think I'm really passionate about when it comes to working with students at this high school. And I feel very lucky to work in it is a diverse community, but there is a community public school that serves that diverse community. So, but it's more important to trabajar in the community for personas diferentes, con la escuela de la comunidad, que sirve a todos los estudiantes diferentes en esta escuela. Hi, everybody, I'm Maranza Lopez, and I'm a junior at the Sunday School. Um, me llamo Thank you. 
to enter high school. And um, something that I really enjoyed about this school is that they're supportive. You know, they're there to help, and we all know that it's a scary transition to go from middle school to high school. So um, some advice I give you as parents and as kids entering high school, um, don't be scared. I know it's terrifying and it's um, really scary to enter. And as a freshman, I was terrified. I was scared. I'm entering a new world and I'm like, wow, like I'm something little entering such a big new world, you know? But as an interested freshman, I had an open mind, you know? I know it's hard to come with an open mind, but I'm like, wow, it's a new transition, but it's time for change. And I think um, something that really helped me was, um, like I said, open-minded. Something that I wish as I entered um, my freshman year was to get closer to my teachers. I know a lot of people say, um, get closer to your teachers, but they're to help. But as a freshman, you're scared, you know? Like this teacher is now like gonna be teaching me for like a whole year and I don't even know if I'm gonna get along with them, if I'm gonna be like a good student, you know? But get close to them, you know? Go in after school, get help, because they're there to help. And everyone says, oh, well, get close to my teacher, yeah, like whatever. But no, really, it's like a big thing. Um, I really wish my freshman year I would have taken that advice seriously and um, actually gone in, you know. I was terrified for going in and like I, I was just scared, you know, to fail, to get help. But my sophomore year, I took that advice in and when, once I like created that relationship with my teacher, it really helped me. For example, um, my English teacher, Ms. Collins, she's such a big help and I'm like truly grateful that I got close to her and I took that advice to other older people told me to take um, as a intern high school, you know. Um, she really helped me not only with school, but like outside of school. She was a great friend to go to when I needed some advice, um, including something else, you know. So just be open, go talk to your teachers. They're, they're there to help, you know. They're there to like, create a relationship that it's gonna help you all your four years, you know. You may not have them the next year, but they're still there, you know, to go talk to. Um, and another thing I really am grateful that I did was join clubs, you know? The big thing about West Salt High School is that they provide so many clubs to join, you know? Athletic, like, there's so many clubs to join and something that I did was join volleyball my um, freshman year and I was grateful because I knew some of the upperclassmen and I know it was kind of scary, like we were like best friends or friends, but just the fact that you knew some people made it much easier to enter high school. So just be open-minded and be, um, like I know it's gonna be scary because I was terrified, but just be open-minded and go with a, a good attitude, you know? If everyone goes with something with a good attitude, everything will be better. So just be ready and have fun with it because if you have fun, everything's gonna be okay. Um, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so when I entered my first year, I had a lot of fear and I know that their children will have a lot of fear too. But one thing that I say is that Um, vayan con una mente abierta. Ya sé que va a ser duro y va a ser muy, um, con, van a tener mucho miedo, pero si van con una um, mente abierta, pueden aprender mucho más cosas. Una cosa que yo realmente no tomé cuando entré en mi primer año es hablar con mis maestros, pero um, ahí están para ayudar. Y así que muchas personas dicen, oh, no vas a con tu maestro, está bien. Y es, um, puede ser duro, pero si lo toman, realmente puede servir. Cuando entré en mi um, segundo año, tenía una maestra de inglés que realmente me ayudó, no nomás like, en la escuela, pero afuera. Sí, um, fue mi amiga, you know? tenía problemas, iba con ella, y hice esa, esa relación con ella y me ayudó mucho. So, lo que yo le aviso a sus hijos es que nomás um, tengan una mente abierta y vayan con sus maestros y no tengan miedo, porque ya sé que va a ser duro, pero si nomás van con una buena atención, Um, va a ser mejor. Y también um, lo que me gusta de pasar high school es que tienen muchos clubs que pueden entrar y pueden ser parte. Hay muchos deportes que pueden entrar y ahí hacen relaciones con los niños más grandes. So hacen la transición de middle school a high school un poquito más fácil porque conocen alumnos que también están en esa escuela. So, sí. uh, yeah, she, Dana, she deserves extra credit for this So we'll, we'll keep going through the itinerary, and, but if, if we have questions, and if you have questions of Aranza, um, please feel free to, to ask them. We, we brought her, she's a, a great young woman, 11th grade, she served on our accountability committee, 
And uh, I asked her, I was like, I haven't seen you. And she's like, I know, I miss you. <laughs> she said, it's me. You missed being involved. And uh, so we invited her, and, and thank you for being here. And just kind of broad strokes, we have you know, some information to share with you. We want to make sure that everybody gets it. We want to kind of do that in a timely manner so there's an opportunity for you guys to ask questions of us. And I can drop your strong attention to ask questions of us. For me, it's important that I'm not only saying that to parents here, I'm saying that to students here. Uh, that if you want to hear your questions, we try to So, this is in, in some ways, Aranza already summarized this itinerary. But we think about the school in general. What are we trying to do? We're trying to prepare students, just as Jamie mentioned, is in direction to, a, um, to college, to a career choice of their choice. And that's so important to us. So we talk about college early, we talk about college often. It's the conversation in this escuela. When all the students are in the conversation, in preparation for the universities. This is for all the students, it's important to prepare for the college and the school. And character development doesn't stop in the middle school. In fact, it becomes equally important in the high school. We have students who still need, and we'll, you know, we all need to continue to be reminded of how best to act, how best to support each other, and how best to learn from one another. And students are in a continuous process of learning how to do that. We also, as Arons have pointed out, encourage students to participate in clubs and sports and theater. One of the thriving extracurricular activities at the middle school, as you know, is band. And we continue that, and we want to continue to build on that success. Choir is another one. Our athletics, half of all students participate in competitive athletics. We'd love to see that grow, but that's not the only way to participate. Key club, honor club, gay, lesbian um, club, all of those clubs are ways to get involved. And as Aranza pointed out, the more we can encourage students to find ways to engage with teachers and other students, I think the better chance students will succeed. I used to say that in you know, a different way, like it's really important to us that all students feel they belong in the summer. And there are lots of opportunities that we're connected to this class. So it's important for us to get those of the young that say, talk to this and spread out. We have many opportunities to spread this and have a connection on the class. You know, to a little bit, we're not going to do a full, uh, detailed look at here's your class by class progress through high school. We didn't want to put a kind of broad picture of if there's no, you don't know anything about the classes that take you from where you are right now to be prepared for college. Here's a quick kind of summary of like the classes you might take throughout the years in this whole school. So this is your traditional trajectory for English. English 1, English 2, 3, English 4, CMC's English. So those are, that's kind of a straight, typical class load. A more challenging progression, which for our students, they're opting probably about close to a half are opting into AP English composition. And that's this one, AP English language. So English 1 is a freshman, 2 is a sophomore, and then your first AP class in English as a junior. And then the literature. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. No, it really is. I don't think I can make it higher. That's okay. You can just put it in the guide. I was just like, when there's the. Like, what I can't visit, 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 I can't visit,
puede empezar en el medio es, es bases que son bases de universidades en grado 11 y 12. Estudiantes que están haciendo el avance están haciendo esto. Y también aquí, si no hablas si no hablo inglés, um, hay clases para estudiantes que, estudiantes que no hablan inglés, pero puede um, empezar en esta, yo sé que es pathway, ¿no? In addition, it's a cultural geography for ninth grade that we offered this year. So we have one section of about 20 students in cultural AP geography. So we're, we, I think part of the story here is that over the last 10 years, we've gone from a few AP classes to quite a few. And I think one of the uh, things that we spoke to even last year is we do want students to access AP classes. That's helpful. They're very challenging. They take a, a test that is normed across the nation, and, and we um, are preparing students to succeed in those classes. At the same time, it's not, they're not jelly beans. It's not more is better. Um, and you, you, know, you need to think through, what are my interests? What do I want to do? Who do I want to be? And again, we talk about balanced rigor. Just because you take an AP class doesn't mean you're going to be successful, and it doesn't mean you're going to um, live a balanced life. You've got to kind of work with your son or daughter to figure out what's best for him or her in regards to their other goals as well. We do want every student at Basalt High School to access the AP program. Because just as Mr. Hozak said, if you are exposed to an AP curriculum, exposed to that kind of rigor, you are more likely to succeed when you have that same or similar class in college. The percentage of, of your success goes up. So that's that's the intention. And, and 
another, um, and I, I, I want to encourage you not to jump in, um, is another important thing is support. One important thing is support. It's an 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 important thing But it's one of the hardest classes I'm taking, and it is kind of like a college class. There's a lot of homework, a lot of like things to do. But I'm grateful because I'm getting that college experience, and I know that when I go to college, it's kind of going to be like this. So even though it's hard, um, just the experience you get from it is so good because you have, like when, once you enter college, you're like, okay, I kind of know what's going to be like, so I know how to schedule myself and not like mess up. So. So one of the things that we're talking about is you know, college preparation. And so that college preparation comes with a bit of a progression. This year for the first time, we're offering all freshmen, we're expecting all freshmen to take the PSAT 9 test. And that will enable us to look at how um, they are projected to perform on that SAT test that they take their junior and senior year and allow not only themselves, their families, but also the teachers to understand relative strengths and weaknesses in their academic, uh, in their academic portfolio. Uh, some of the problems, the challenges, if you will, for the state test, we don't get that information until really late in the year. The PSAT eventually will be taking that for ninth graders in September and have that information available to you shortly thereafter. Um, uh, just to summarize a little bit, some of the results we're seeing, um, the younger students, including their juniors and Ronza's grade, and what they're showing us on assessments of college readiness is they're becoming more and more ready for college. Like, we're, we feel we're making some progress there. So, estamos mejorando estos resultados con los estudiantes jóvenes y por ejemplo, la grado 11. Um, los resultados de grado 11 es, 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 es mejor, mejor cada año. Okay, so we're feeling really good about our progress there and how we're helping students be prepared for college. And one of the things uh, we do have, we have a full-time college counselor. We have two um, school counselors and a full-time college counselor, as well as full, um, a, a physician's assistant, part of the Rory Ford Health Services Center. Um, so we have a kind of a robust counseling and support services at the school. When we're talking about college, we're talking about kind of a process that culminates in that junior and senior year. That junior year, the 11th grade year, students have a class called Discovery where they plan for and start applying for college. So that starts um, in freshman year, but it gets more and more formalized and more and more um, time intensive as you get older over the course of time. So, you know, just big picture, looking at the school, uh, and then we'll, we'll have a bit more of a kind of an open-ended question and answer. Our school's growing, our community's growing. Uh, this year we added 50 students, we expect, because of your eighth grade class um, to add additionally um, another 50 students to our school population. So the school population will be at about 500 students. And we expect that that will more or less stay at that level for several years. I don't think it's gonna continue to grow. I think the eighth grade is the, the bubble. You guys must have been very productive. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, you know, beyond that, just, just, this, <laughs> you don't have to drink that. Um, but one of the things that, you know, we, and, and this is not, you know, I, I want to make sure that you understand is that one of the things that we're very open about is, is Mr. Hozak and I are working with teachers to improve the school. There's work to be done. There's work to be done in every school. And our notion isn't like, we are killing it. Yeah, we got this. We don't think that. We, don't, we know that we have work to do. We have work to do because so many students need to get to a higher level to compete and do well and be successful in college. That's the work ahead of you. It becomes more challenging when you get to high school. And if you're trying to move into college and we want everyone to do that, it's gonna take a team effort, not seat time. And, and that's, that's, I think good students are figuring that out, but we need everyone to figure that out and everybody to work together to do that. Um, so, I'll let you. Did anyone project about in this way? I mean, that was perfecto de peace. Estamos trabajando para mejorar cosas para estudiante. Pero tenemos, tenemos, también tenemos evidencia que hay progreso. Tenemos una escuela creciente, prensa positiva, resultados para estudiantes que son mejor, mejor cada año. Entonces, hay mucho trabajo, pero estamos trabajando en eso para mejorar esa calidad de estudio. Is, um, the one thing to communicate is you know, this is an, an event, right? Where like here's information, but it's not the only time we hope to communicate. It's just a helpful time to send a quick message to a lot of people. Um, but we are easily reached, and some of the content information is right there behind me. Um, but also, it's on our website. I think if you walk into it, we encourage people to visit the school. Um, in fact, we've scheduled two official visit days. Um, and not to communicate when we come on those days, um, but just so we could plan to have the capacity to give a large group of students a tour of the school if need be. So those dates are December 13th and January 10th, where you'd be welcome to come to the school in the morning and receive, I mean, you can talk more about this, but it's going to add a tour from students, information from us, and just kind of get a feel for what this whole high school is like. Tell us that. Yes, in some ways, my Spanish is not with my English, but in some ways, it's better because in Spanish, I speak more concisely. Um, so, I have two days to visit the school in December 13 and January 10. And they are also bienvenidos to visit the school and talk with us and also with our students. If those days don't work, you can visit any other day. Yes. Are you prepared to, tonight to discuss when, what, what else will be coming, like registration for the kids, what the, the tentative dates are for those, and explanations for what they before we start thinking about class-wise? Yes, we're not there quite yet. Okay. Registration the class? Yeah, the question, good question is, what's the enrollment registration process look like? When? Will you have access to the course catalog to allow you to kind of start mapping out what your classes, what your electives might be for next year? And the answer to that is mid-February, we did registration last year. And what we did um, for the past is we had all families come up to the high school and we, and, and we can't do that anymore. It was too big. We tried to have um, a dinner where we were accommodating two or three hundred people, and it and it, we we were overwhelmed, and it was not. We didn't get the objective met. So what we're talking about doing this year is coming down to the middle school and working with Ms. Elsberman and the, and her structure here, and talking about specifically the electives, but also giving guidance to 
parents from current academic records of what are likely options for uh, enrollment in core classes. So we just want to simplify the process. We want to put a little bit more emphasis on when we get you up to the high school, um, it's going to be, I think, in, we're going to look for something that's not, but that we're not trying to accomplish so many different tasks in one evening. So mid-February registration, but a lot of it will take place here, and we're not sure about what kind of events we'll have up at the high school. That's a great question. I think I need to work with uh, the Waldorf School in particular and just figure that and figure that out for you. And I think the initial, my initial idea was to come to Waldorf and just talk a little bit more about our program and then to start providing you resources as need be. And and we want to be as responsive as we can to you, to the school, and we'll do everything we can to, to make it easy. Yeah. Um. Following on that, the days to visit, is that an entire day, or what are the hours yes. like if they're able to come? Yeah, 9.30. And so at 9.30, there'll be a short welcome, Mr. Hozak and myself. And at 9.40, we will pair students up with leadership students, like Aranza, and they will tour the school, go into classes, have conversations with other students their age. <coughs> And, uh, and then I think um, parents will also have um, some time to tour the school with, with students as well. So it kind of ends at the end of the day? Or? So it's just at, the, uh, at 940, you go in with students, and it's really 930 to about 1030. Oh, okay. It's really, yeah, we're not going to, okay. no, yeah, about an hour. Now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Question? Yes, for, for December 13th and January 19th, school visitation days, where you would come with your son or daughter and kick the tires. You're like, whoa, do I see myself here? What does this look like? What does this feel like? You'd be in the hallways, talking to students. Yeah. The exception is math, and there's a kind of a consensus. Of, we ask eighth grade math teachers to recommend any students who could more appropriately skip math one and go into math two. there and if that means sharing an assessment that they might use then it, it can but it doesn't have to we don't want to we want to respect the opinions of the educators in the school who know the students more um, but we, we what we, we could support is by providing an assessment if that's something that school administration and the teachers want other questions like to spend a full day, you know, we probably not say a full day, but if you want to come at eight and go to lunch, great. And, and you could work with myself, Mr. Hozak, or Ann, our registrar, to set that up. No, no problem. How about another question for Aranza? Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, yes, please. I have one for where do you want to go to college? Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I have thought about it because I'm a senior next year. Um, probably um, UCCS in Colorado Springs. I just looked at one on ORU. It's in Oklahoma. Or, I don't know, I'm, like, I'm still trying to look, but yeah, those are my kind of like top colleges to look into because it's like a big thing, so I'm still trying. Are these colleges you had already heard of before going into ninth grade, or is this just information you've gathered? Um, well, I am a first generation student, so I'm like trying to like get myself out there because none of my family knows anything. Like I'm, I am the first. And what I like about Boston High School is that they do provide that support. You know, our counselor, our college counselor, she like she's there to help. You know, you just have to go in and like ask her. And there is some college fairs that I did go to the Aspen one, and that really helped me. Like it opened my mind to see like how many colleges there are. And I want to be a physical therapist, so it's kind of like. I like ask them and, like what I want to do and what I like what college is offered. So yeah, just getting yourself out there and like talking to your teachers and your counselors will really help you know come in and like go to the college fairs. So yeah, I didn't really know anything coming in my freshman year, but it was really great to have that support from the college counselor and teachers as well. Oh yeah, that's right. So yo soy la primera generación de mi familia. So, me acabo de preguntar si es que con que quiero ir y qué quiero hacer. So, como siendo la primera generación de mi familia, realmente mi familia no sabe nada del colegio y es muy duro porque soy la primera que va a um, entrar al colegio. Mi madre terminó el sexto grado y mi papá terminó, pero no tuve el dinero para ir. Solo que yo, cuando entré, um, me puse, como quería saber más porque mi, mi familia no sabía. Solo que me gusta de pasar high school es que tienen una consejera de colegio que está ahí para ayudar. Si no más se pregunta, es like, te va a ayudar porque like, es lo que lo, lo, una cosa de pasar high school. Y no más preguntar a, a los maestros qué piensan. Um, y también hay college fairs, que lo que es bien padre porque uh, cuando yo fui a Aspen me abrió la mente a muchos colegios que ni sabía que podía ir. Y a veces um, es duro, pero si te pones tienes una mente abierta, puedes decir, y si no más usas las resources que tienes, Creo que vas a poder hacer más. Actually, one of the, we have we do have a variety of students that go to uh, the state colleges that are looking at um, the Northeast. Um, you know, certainly, um, like law schools in Colorado, you have more students staying in state than out of state. Um, but there is a variety, and I would actually, for if you have kind of question that's like, hey, I want to dig in and know more details of work as you go on to school, I would encourage you. Or you just asked the question of other people who have the same one to kind of 
kind of do some clicking through on our website. We actually have like a student services link that connects to college counseling, and you can kind of dig through like where kids going to college, um, what's the kind of pathway from like the stepping stones from where you are right now to going to college, and you can really um, learn a lot more specifics. You can see the names of colleges all the kids went to last year. So I encourage you to do that. And then also, like, I'm not trying to go to the website. If, if you want to then follow up with our with us and your college counselor, we'd be happy to talk you through that. <coughs> yes? Is Spanish the only language option? It is. We have two. Yeah, go ahead. That is correct. Uh, we have um, the Spanish program. We actually have two kind of tracks, if you will. We have a Spanish for Spanish speakers program. We have a Spanish for non native speakers, but they both culminate in AP Spanish. And so, yes, it's a short answer. I just had a comment with Andrew's question about the college fair. Um, I thought one thing that was very helpful for me was the college symposium that is offered in Glenwood Springs at CMC. They bring in um, uh, people from the colleges who do uh, they, they will give you information about how you enroll or how you apply um, to colleges, but they'll also give you advice on what classes to take in high school. You know, for instance, one of the things I learned was you don't want to take more than two or three APs at a time. You start taking four or five APs, that's harder than a college class, college semester. So it was information like that that has helped us to register it in high school and, and give us some guidance on what classes to take. Also at the Aspen College Fair, they have classes there, talking about finance, talking about classes, things like that. Things like that is going to help you a little bit more for high school. Actually talking to the colleges themselves is going to be more beneficial when they're a little bit older. When they're and when it's the like what time of the year? I think it's in the spring, okay. I want to say. Uh -huh. um, and Liz, the college counselor, usually puts that information out, so I watch the website. Um, and we can try to get her to send that out to the eighth grade too, maybe uh, if yeah. possible. Yeah. Like if you can send it to Jen and have them pass it on to the eighth grade. But that was very beneficial for us. We are really trying to build a, like a robust resource for families, be it on our website or through our Facebook page. So, so like us. Um, and, uh, and, uh, you, I think you'd be surprised if you, you check it out there, you ask questions of your neighbors who are parents in, in the school, or you just come and walk up to the school or call us ask a question, you can get your question answered, and uh, we're here to, to make sure you have the information you want. Can we still have funding for our college counselors? I know it's been a question in the past. The answer, the answer is yes. We'll continue to commit to a full-time college counselor. The Aspen Community Foundation kind of started us down that road, and then the district and the school has absorbed more and more of those costs as, as, as time goes by. I Did you have your hand up? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure this one. So I, I happened to see the band uh, at First Friday uh, a couple weeks ago, and it was fantastic. And I was really just kind of stunned that the Salt, you know, band was that advanced and, and exciting. And I'm curious about spirit, school spirit. We talked a lot about it, academics. We talked a lot about readiness for college. But what about the spirit of the school? Like, you know, how do you guys, how do you guys promote, you know, sort of togetherness? And I guess this is partially a question for you. You know, does everybody feel included? Do people feel fired up about being at Basalt? Is it? You know, is it something you really, people really want to show up for every day, you know? It's yeah, um, well, I was in leadership for, um, I was part of leadership for two years, um, and our goal was to create school spirit. That was one of our main goals. And I think um, we do bring it. It just depends on the students sometimes. We put it out there, and it's out there, and if you go with a great attitude, it's going to be great. You know, um, we have football games, and we get excited. It's so much fun to be out there, even in the cold, you know, to support our teams. Um, we have basketball and we just love to go and support. So it just depends on the student. If you want to have a great high school years, um, be part of it, you know, join it. It's provided, so might as well take advantage of it. So I think we do 
like a great job providing school spirit. It just depends on the student if you want to participate or not. So I think, um, yeah, we do provide school spirit. It's really cool to go to sports and like the choir, you know, it's not like really school spirit, kind of, but just participating and supporting other clubs. That's what creates the fun, you know, in high school, so. Awesome. I'd like to say something along those lines. I, I saw a conversation on Facebook today, actually, with a couple of parents from the neighboring school district. And their, the conversation from one mother to another was, how the hell does the salt get that, all that spirit? Because apparently there were so many kids that turned up the eighth grade boys basketball game. And one mother said to the other mother, apparently they put the kids first in the salt. And that was the way the conversation went, and I, mean, I, I just thought that that was very curious. But having been here, the sense of community is profound. Oh, yeah. salt! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it truly is. We've been through the salt the whole way, and the sense of community is beyond profound. It really is. You know, we so haven't got ten million extra dollars, but we've got the most incredible <laughs> participation, and the kids love each other like in a way that I've never seen. I went on the eighth grade field trip um, for 24 hours, and I was blown away. And I'd, I'd, I'd echo that, but I'd also just say that we don't want school spirit to be defined as going to the football game. And so that's why the band is so important. That's why experiential ed education is so important. That's why crew is so important. And at the same time, we know that crew isn't like dialed in and everybody's doing jumping jacks at the same play pace at the same time. We have work to do to kind of create those connections with kids so that all, all kids feel like they belong in basalt. And, so, and I'm just you know, kind of calling that out to make sure that you don't think that we define belonging as going to the football game. That's a good part of it, but it's not the whole enchilada. Yeah? All life, let's prove. Crew, good question. So it's a, an advisory structure. Um, if you're you know, familiar with expeditionary learning, um, actually, Glen Springs Elementary is they, they actually partner with expeditionary learning or EL, and it's a, it's a structure where you intentionally make a, a daily connection between a small group of students and a teacher, so they one have a go-to person and advocate, and also there's a place to deliver things like like social emotional learning kind of supports around if something bad happened in the school, how do we listen to students and give them information? So it's basically a it's a advisory program to connect with students and make that connection on a daily basis to support them academically and just personally. Yep. Um, not every kid is gonna go to college and um, is there any long term planning for vocational education? There's so many people that work in the trades room are very successful, and uh, carpenters, plumbers, electricians that really do well for themselves. And is, is that in the long-term planning of uh, um, you know, this education? And I, I, I can res I have a response to that, but Peter may want to add something. Um, what we're, I mean, the, the, the world's changing. And um, one thing that is changing is that the, um, the entrance requirement into a lot of professions, most professions, if not all, is, is it requires some sort of learning after high school. Whether that's a, a four-year college or not, it doesn't have to be that. It could be a vocational program. Um, but we're trying to look at like, okay, how do you continue learning? after high school in order to have a better career. And uh, Liz Penzo, our college and career counselor, is actually very um, resourceful about bringing some of those programs in and talking through like, hey, you want to become a mechanic? Here is a program in Denver or right here where you can be there for a year or two and work and then take, you know, get a better job as a mechanic um, at the end of that program. Um, and but kind of aim towards a trade rather than a four-year liberal arts education. Um, so we are aware of that, and I think our, our college and career counseling is aware of that too and trying to support kids in moving in that direction. The only, thing I, the only thing I'd add is we're not going to be a trade school. We're not, that's, 
And I don't necessarily think that's your question. I think your question is, you know, are there ways for students who want to enter the trades, you know, are there ways for them to advance towards doing that in a way that really would suit them and their prospective family? To trades. Yeah, and I think one of the, I mean, I guess what I, I want to kind of say there is that, for instance, Woodshop has, has, has gone by the wayside right now, and what we're pushing on is STEM, computer programming, design, and collaborations between math, science, and uh, math, science, engineering, but math, science, engineering, and art. Uh, and, and so that's where we're pushing kind of ex hands-on, experience-based work. One, one, another thing that is, is certainly not a finished product, it's a thing that's pretty new and we're working on, is the idea of a capstone for each student. And that is an opportunity for students to kind of pursue um, a passion that is their own, that isn't just curricular, and then make a connection with some sort of advisor, which might be a teacher, but might be a community member in the trades. And I don't want to pretend like that's all flushed out and we have all of these things organized for students, but we're hoping that 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 requirement, that opportunity for students becomes a way for students to be able to, yeah, make a connection in the community and apprentice during their junior or senior year. Um, we hope that it starts moving in that direction uh, over the course of the next couple of years. Yes? Yeah, and I, I, I know I, I said daily, it's daily. Uh, we have, it's um, every day except for Wednesday, and we, it may, you know, maybe it'll end up being two or three or four days a week in the years to come, but it's like 20, 25 minutes daily, except for Wednesday. Um, and they might, a couple of things they might do, they might do like a reading and have a conversation around it, or they might just get, like for example, when report cards come out, there's like academic advising where teachers sit with the students and say, okay, what went well, what didn't go well, what are some goals we're gonna set for this next couple weeks? And it's, again, like, and it's a thing we're working on and in some places it's done better than in other places, but it's something we hope to get better into it. Does a lot of students need that periodic check-in in order to keep doing well?